Damian Orande Crawford, a true power broker, an incredible leader, a man who understands the struggle of poverty and knows the power of dreaming big. Coming out of the heart of the inner city, a dirt track zinc fence community called Little Lane off Hagley Park Road, he's emerged as a people person, a go-getter, and has no fear of taking on a challenge. This youth from Little Lane, because and he's such... You hear people bandy about the title, um, from the people, for the people. This, that's the real, that, that's him. People throw it around, you know, and, and they just use it as a title. But Jim, Cranny, Crazy Jim, Prezi, Damian Crawford, hopefully MP, not even hopefully, MP, he is really of the people. I learned more about Little Lane, <laughs> than, than, than if I'd lived there myself. So that's him. He has been there. He has been in the situation where he had to grow up and make sacrifices. And he's shown where education can be a path out. Damon, in my mind, is a go-getter. I mean, he's, he's once he, anything he put his, puts his mind to, I mean, he will go after it and he's gonna go until until there's a result. So whether the result is that he achieved it or it means that he, he didn't achieve it, I need to, to, to re-look or revisit, he's gonna go after it. So in, in my mind, I mean, when I look at Damien, I see him as a go-getter. I'm hoping to be told that I'm wrong and to be convinced that I'm wrong, but if I am not convinced, then I have the conviction to continue pressing on, um, regardless of the outcome and regardless of the repercussions. I believe that bravery comes from knowledge of the repercussions. The person that goes into a risk not knowing it's a risk is not, is not brave, he's just foolish. The person that understands the risk and still take on the challenge, he's brave. So I have strong convictions, I have strong beliefs in certain things and um, neither my personal benefits or peripheral benefits will change those convictions. Crawford is known for challenging the status quo. And the goal is not to see the Prime Minister. The goal is to have a tax repeal, to have a tax revoked. And so therefore, seeing the Prime Minister was just an action as a part of, a, a actual strategy in the goal. Now, if he has refused to see us, then we have to do sufficient things for him to want to see us. I will call Mr. Shaw today to a debate on the IMF for the public's benefit. Because I don't want him to debate Omar Davis. The people will only be laughing instead of listening to what he has to say. The people of Jamaica must now say, have a say, have the ability to say, if we want to continue with these people. I don't know if he's going to be a great politician because he's too honest sometimes. You understand, he's straightforward. He does not pull punches and uh, he, he tells it as he sees it and all. Uh, and, um, and even so, he's, he's, a, he's a youth that will listen him listen and him analyze, he might not do it as you suggest, but he will listen to you first and then tell you what he thinks and if he's not going to go here, why he's not going to. You understand? He, and, and if you were here during the time when he was president, you would understand the love that people on this campus had for him. Well, apart from his youthfulness and He's bright. What I like about Damien, he's very honest. And he's someone who will take on any leader and to tell you how he feels. And this is what we need at this time. Someone who will speak out and someone who will stand up for truth and stand up for the people who he believes in and who he happens to represent. He started out slow, convinced that he would be a track star, which led to a constant internal battle with both parents. He believes that he was a great runner. Well, I used to call myself the Flash, yeah? and I used to have that written on my shoes and everything, but I could run faster. Yeah? Um, but um, my father, he always felt that education was the utmost importance, and he didn't want any distraction at all, you know. No track team, no work. But he would not say that to daddy, because he know he couldn't. Right, so he rebelled when he said he got the 9 0. That was the time he got his 9 0. 
went to several PTA meetings and grade meetings, the teachers saying that this boy, he's a leader, he has ability. It just in the early days, it was just more gallivanting and idling and not going to school sometimes. You know? That's why I don't give up on people because there are many students who are asked to leave school um, before they have been able to fulfill their potential because they have not had the outcomes that they needed. So the first four years were excellent as in fun years, but um, as in grades, they weren't so marvelous. The turning point came when his father on his dying bed shared some harsh realities with him. But before the father died, he went into the room and walked through that door. He came out and he said to me, Mommy, I know that he was sick, you know, but I didn't know he was so sick. And daddy said, son, he didn't call him Damien. And he said, son, come here. Sit down right here, son. And he sat there and daddy said to him, no, daddy is going. Daddy won't be around to hold your hand and go and beg someone a little work for you. Plus, you have your mother and your four sisters on your shoulder. And he came out and he, just like that. He went down the road, he didn't spend any long time, and he came back. But when my father was going to die, the day that he was going to die, he called me in and said, well, I, I'm the one now who have responsibility, but he also said that women will find someone to take care of them, while men would have to be able to take care of somebody. And being the only boy, I had to start fitting my life together. Um, my father wasn't book bright, but he was very smart, knowledgeable. and. Um, yeah, so when I went to, to summer work, it was downtown, um, I got a call at about 1.30 that he died and then that conversation just became more important. The time that we were having the conversation, it was, I need to leave, but after, you know, uh, it became more important at that time. The change came. He decided that success was a must. At the time, I suppose he was confused. But when we sort of showed to him that this was fifth form, and um, CXC meant a passport to tertiary institution or the work of the world, that if he's going to take care of his sisters and all of them in his life, then this would give him a head start. And so it's essential that the academics were something for the la first time at last he concentrates on. And somehow, I suppose, a combination of those factors got him thinking. September, he went to school, back to Casey, and that year they said was a, it was said it was a dramatic recovery. Eight CXCs, five ones, and three twos. The following two years, four A levels. And Damien was on his way since. At fifth form, Damien be um, began to stamp his class where he took it even more personal than everybody else and he, he went out at fifth farm to, to show that listen I can do just as as good as any of these quote unquote bright persons and and, and, and he did just that because at that point in time um when the CXC results came out Damon I think got eight subjects. Now eight subjects was not the best performance at our school but it was the one that got the most attention because it was coming from Damon because he was the person, he was one of the persons who had quote-unquote no hope and is coming from a quote-unquote dunce class. So it was, it was seen, it, it overshadowed the, the persons who got the straight A's um, during that time and everybody was talking about Damon eight subjects when so he had persons who got nine and ten subjects at that point in time. We formed a crew at school called Success Crew, five inner city people. Um, Seaview Gardens, um, Riverton, Waterhouse, me, and one from um, Old Arbor. And we found a crew called Success Crew and started performing. I remember a time when we were, we were um, in sixth form and we, we, there was a, this huge damn fraction in sixth form. There was a persons who were in the traditional bright class that went to sixth form and there were persons who came from the not so bright class who went to sixth form and we call ourselves a success crew. And we had a you know, we were we were making up songs. I rem remember I did an imitation of a bounty killer. 
that had the class, I mean, singing for like months about how successful we, we were. I mean, that, that to me stood out because, I mean, I, I didn't know, I didn't know how he made it up or how he thought about it or anything. But all I remember, it was extremely funny to the point where even teachers was laughing at the song, how funny it was. And we said, success grow is never failure. We are tracksmen and we are baller. We are cricketer and we are scholar. So go away with your dirty behavior. Talk and make your vex. Now jump in our chest, Mr. Punk. We are go pass every test. We ain't a distress. We lay it to rest. Success grow is nothing less than the best. So that was our little um, ante. To come from nine zeros to pass eight subjects, um, it was a great thing at school. And, and all the teachers were elated. And um, the, the, vice, the vice principal who used to sit me in her office and asked me to read before I go home till I found out that she didn't know some of the subjects so I just told her that I read and left. Um, they, oh, it was great. It was great fun. And all my friends were, were excited for me. It was on to the University of the West Indies where he began to establish himself as a leader and commanded the respect of his peers. It was there that he left an indelible mark. I was Hall Chairman, I was Guild President twice. I was Guild President in the Bahamas and then I did my Masters and Guild President in Jamaica. And I was Hall Chairman for Taylor Hall. Um, I also got awards for leadership there and sports, um, to name a few and was sent to represent the University of Jamaica at the Future Leaders Conference, I think in 2006. Um, the Future Leaders was not the conference, it was, a, it was like a school for Future Leaders for three, three, three weeks. Yes. Talking to him showed me that this was a, a very analytical mind. This was someone who's actually concerned about people and this man was a leader. And he was not a leader because he thought he was better than people. He was a leader because he wanted to serve and give off the best to the people. And I remember saying to him on that weekend, I said, you know, I'm looking around right now and I don't see anybody else for president next year. Right? And, and that was it. He, in my book, was the him, him candidate for president next year, president of the guild. Because not, naturally, a lot of persons, when you're on the guild committee, uh, persons look to, to, to step up. And he was Hall Chair Taylor that year. And I was looking, I was like, this, this is our president. You know, I mean, I started calling him Prezi from then. And, I, and we became closer over that year. And uh, he was always willing to not just be Taylor Hall's chairman, but assist anyone else who, who needed some help. Marlon, one of my good friends, said to me, I need to be the guild president. And I was, I think I'm one of the first people to have been guild president immediately after all chairman. Usually guild presidents are career guild, guild members. Deputy chair at the time was running for, for guild president. He was deputy president or running for guild president. He was a strong candidate. I remember during the debates, during debates, we had the night before or the week before, we had um, gotten our best minds together and wrote the speech and everything and gave it to Damon and said, okay, and we did everything, fine-tune everything. And when Damon went up, Damon looked at the speech and they, 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 I remember the guy spoke before Damon and Damon decided that the speech not going to work. And at that point in time, he, he quote-unquote winged it. And I mean, it was, in my mind, just, just brilliant at its best form. And I remember right after his speech, I mean, the, 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 the room got up and started to show, we won't vote no, we won't vote no. And, I, and at that point in time, I realized that this, this, this guy, you know, I mean, something is on the horizon for him. Rise to the occasion, look at yourself and say you're strong. No one can stop you, oh yeah. Rise to the occasion, go ahead, you know you're strong. No one can stop you. I can remember going to Spalding with him when um, he spoke um, at 
one of the constituency conferences. I think it was for Azan. And, um, you know, when he was in there and he spoke to the people and when, you know, everybody was just engaged. And when he came out and, you know, how I see the people reacting to him, like I said, I think, um, you know, he has gotten there where where in terms of leadership and people having the confidence in him. Um, I, I say yes, um, he, he sounds like he's ready to walk, walk the talk. He was a true leader, even in the eyes of his family. We had lost our leader. And at that point, he got up. I mean, we had many other strong persons there. My aunt Patsy, I mean, a blessing in disguise at the moment. But the way he came to us as the children who were now kind of lost in the wilderness, wondering what is going to happen next. And the way he brought us together, not only comforted us, but showed us that now we had to achieve the vision my father had. At that point, I think it was the first time that I had been inspired by my brother. And I continue to be inspired by him to this day. And so he understands that I, I will toil behind him because he continues to be an inspiration and very rarely does he disappoint me. And so Damien is my leader. Whatever color shirt he's wearing, I will support him. As long as he stay true to the gym that we have met, the Damien Crawford that we know, I will support him. Orange, green, gray, blue, Cartel, whichever colour, I'll support him. A man for all seasons. A leader for the people that came from the people. Leadership is based in part on the ability to bring positive outcomes. And that is dependent on the person that you are. Well, as you know, I'm excited about being the candidate for East Rural St. Andrew. And I am pleased with the reaction that I've been receiving so far. I understand the concern about the influence of money on the ground and the fact that persons may be using their positions in government entities to promote themselves at this particular point in time. However, I am convinced that once we reach the people and convince them sufficiently that we are here for their long-term benefit, then no 5,000, 10,000 or chop bush can actually change them. In the Damien Crawford understood inequality, the color of class, the prejudice of living in the inner city. So he chose the People's National Party as his vehicle for making a difference in this country. When I realized that the country was unequal, when I realized that something needed to be done. I had a party once um, when I was 17 years old. I had a girlfriend that had um, some financial resources. I didn't know I was poor while I was growing up. I was the richest in the lane. And um, that was my reality. You know, I had pipe water before most people when they were carrying water. Um, I had TV before most people. But um, when I went to UWE, I saw that there were many other things I didn't have. But I never grew up without food and all them things. You know, but um, I had a party in the lane, dirt lane, standpipe, no light, zinc fence. And um, the girl came early to cut the cake. And she left her sister, her father brought the sister. And um, he decided that um, the lane wasn't sufficient. And he then took everybody. He called, he had a big phone those days. I remember he called everybody's father to come and, um, and pick them up. And at that time, I realized that the world wasn't even. And um, I then read a book by Michael Manley called The Politics of Change. And I decided that, well, that's a party that I would want to be actively working for. But my father was an active PMP person from the start, so that also influenced the, the, the outcome. What the PMP stood for was what he stood for. And it was just a, 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 a nice alignment for him where, where that is concerned, you know? I mean, um, so I wouldn't want to say, even though he grew up in the PMP constituency, my, in my opinion, I mean, Damon is more of a leader. You know, I see him as a leader, you know, and I mean, the, the, the PMP offered that to him and he, and he liked what he saw and that's, such, that's, that's why he's where he's at right now. I would want to use my talents and my education and everything that I've gained for the most part free um, to, to help to develop things, you know, and change things. 
what I had noticed about him more than anything is that he wasn't the type to go and say, yo, this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem. He goes, okay, this is the problem, here are two solutions that I have come up with. This is the problem, here are two solutions that we can look at. This is the problem, here are two more solutions. Are, this is the problem, what do you think? This is what I think, can we sit down and discuss it? That was always his approach. He has never been one to come and point out the problem without at least bringing something in, in, in the form of a solution. And that is, that's commendable in my book. Prezi, no, I read that you tell. Crawford has a strong conviction for change, with truth and sincerity as his motto. He has no fear of the consequences of change. Anything that is good should be in totality. That is how the world becomes better. Huh? Um, I don't think that I am the picture of virtue. But if I think one way, then I'll, I'll, I'll express that. I'm in politics to try and make a positive change. And so therefore, if I should submit just to the norms, then, then there's no change in the norms. That's what I'm saying. So people say that I'm a rebel, and, and I have no re reservations with that because I don't, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the system. I'm uncomfortable with the realities that some people go to schools and we know that they're going to fail. And we expect them to fail. And so when the results come and they pass two subjects, we celebrate because we expected them to get zero subjects. There's another school where people pass 11 subjects and nobody celebrates. I'm uncomfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable with 20 families living in a one-bedroom and then one family living in a 20-bedroom simply because of exposure to opportunities. I don't mind people taking advantage of realities, but if people don't have equal access to opportunity, I'm uncomfortable with that. So Jamaican society to me now is like a tight shoes that I'm not comfortable with and I'm going to continue to fight that system until it changes. I mean, 10 years from now, I can easily see him being that next Prime Minister. Um, but, I mean, I can see him at that level. I mean, I, I, I have no doubt in my mind that he's, he has the, the, the capacity to be that person. So, if, if the opportunity presents itself, whether 10 years from now or even 5 years from now, I believe that he has the capacity no, capacity is one thing. I mean, we have other things that, that will, that will um, cause you to be a, 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 a prime minister, eh? But I know that five years from now, you will more than have the capacity to be that person or be a strong contender. The people, the father have friends, they smoke, but they could not smoke around him. We used to have a little grapevine right there, and the father always pruning that little grapevine, and he said, I don't want no, 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 hold my child and some more, you know? Because I wanted a prime minister, and I don't know who no want. But it's my mistake why I'm here. So I want a prime minister to come and drive me out when I'm old and my head get white. My vision is a part of a larger framework, and so it must fit into Jamaica's vision. And that vision is to make my constituency be the model for a place to live, work, and raise family and do business. And so therefore I must now seek strategies to ensure that it fits into that. Seek strategies that improve education. Seek strategies that reduce crime and, 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 and improve security realities. Seek strategies that cause for businesses to want to move into the community. That cause for people to see economic, um, economic opportunities in the community. And cause for members in the community to see their own viability. When I speak to hope, I speak to hope as an acronym. I think Jamaican people naturally have internal hope, but I speak to H-O-P-E, helping our people excel. And my vision is to use whatever talents I've been blessed with to help our people excel by inspiring them to achieve. And I think that the constituency from my interaction with them thus far are people who are able to be inspired and who are willing to be helped to excel. I think we have a candidate who portrays all aspects of the, the true candidate for the People's National Party going forward. Uh, he mixes youth, he mixes uh, intelligence, some experience, and the drive and commitment to carry through the mandate that the People's National Party is committed to deliver. He is a dynamic force. He's a very dynamic young man. He's very eloquent and quite capable. Based on his uh, work in the PNPYO and in the party as a whole, I've always seen him as somebody who um, the party could always rely on to really go out and speak to the issues as it affects the party. 
<laughs> development is holistic, you know. And so therefore, what you're going to find is that in, the, in any constituency, in any community, you have the independent people that are of the age to work, etc. Then you have people that we call dependents, that are children and adults. And so once you can find that the working people can be, develop themselves um, economically and otherwise, then they automatically contribute to those who are less able to, to do so. And so if we look at the age demographic of, let's say, 18 to 60, that age demographic will have responsibility for the other demographics, 60 and above and under 18. And so what we must focus on as to empower people is to empower those that contribute to the others. Now if I should say focus on the 61 year old, then that empowerment will not be distributed and the multiplier effect will not be there. And so while we will be doing activities for all ages, what we believe is that the focus must be on those who have responsibility naturally through their age and their demographic realities to contribute to the others. Unemployment is alleviated through innovation and entrepreneurship. We want to be the model for that. We want to be, for example, the place that finds entertainment activity as a big business as it is across the world. We want to be the ones that encourage young people that can DJ and sing to actually take education, to have a facility that they can actually get their first exposure through that. And so when we talk about exposure, it's not just in the original sense, but in the general sense that entrepreneurship and um, education will be my focus, yes. As he looks ahead and thinks about his vision for the people of this beloved country, Jamaica, we couldn't help but ask what really keeps him grounded. For me, I thought he would be a, a pastor because Damien was the first one that went to church, got baptized, Damien leads me to Christ. Damien is also a God-fearing person. He believes that there is a creator and he believes that when he has problem, he doesn't take the smoking for it, he doesn't take the liquor. He calls up on this God. She who will guide me, be my guide and create a salvation for me. She who will guide me, be my guide and know that you never stop me. Damien Orande Crawford, educator, entrepreneur, and outspoken equal access advocate, a man of courage and determination. A man for all people.